Good day, folks. It's DIY Guy 123 bringing you another do it yourself video. Today, I'm going to show you a very easy method to install LED lights into a headlight housing that wasn't designed to accommodate LED lights and their ballasts. So, what we have is a headlight assembly out of a 2008 Hyundai Tiburon, and it's the kind of headlight assembly that's completely sealed. So, in order to get the bulbs out, you have to turn a turn a cover and then pull it out or in this case, turn a cap and pull it out, and then the headlight is under there. <clears throat> when you install your new LED lights, they're larger than the halogen ones that came with the car, but the light bulbs themselves do fit in. The problem is the ballast that you need to interface between the light bulb and the 12 volt wiring for the car, um, it's, it's physically big, it's a couple inches long by an inch wide, and it won't fit underneath that cover. So a solution, the best solution would be from the manufacturer, to when you buy the lights, you have the option to buy the buy longer uh, caps here, weather caps. But let's take this one off. But um, you know these caps may be proprietary to Hyundai. I don't know. So these light bulbs are not proprietary to Hyundai. They're a generic bulb that does fit this car, but they probably fit many other cars as well. And so then the light bulb manufacturer would have to sell end caps that are going to fit. Audis and BMWs and every other vehicle that this fits. So it's kind of a really goofy uh, situation where these were not designed to take LED lights in the ballast, but you want to make them fit. So after you get the bulb in place, um, what I did is, you know, there's just not enough room in here to put the ballast. So what I did was I ran the, the cable up through to the ballast and then back down. And that, that little groove was achieved by using an air die grinder like this with a cutting disc. And I cut down at this angle two thicknesses of the cutting disc. What I did was I took my die grinder and I cut down in at this angle and then I cut right beside it at this angle and I chose this precise location to cut because you notice that this cap has a notch here and here and here. There are three notches and then the holes are here and here and here and when you put the cap in to close it you rotate clockwise looking down. And if you had made your notch over here, then when you rotate clockwise this far, one of, one of these notches in the cap would interfere with your new wires. So what I did is I looked underneath, it's, it's hard to describe it where basically at a camera on my finger now, you could see right here is where the notch goes down and then slides around and comes to here and stops. So it was safe for me to make my slice, my cut, uh, just a little bit clockwise of where my finger is right here. So your lights may be different, take a look and see. And what I was concerned about is after I made this cut and then made it down through here and ran the wires, it would no longer be watertight. So I siliconed, I put used RTV silicon in there and uh, let that harden overnight. But I also wanted to make sure the O-ring that's in this cap right here had a contact with something that also would seal. So the O-ring comes in contact with this place where my fingernail is touching right now, and you'll see right in the end of my fingernail right there, that gap has been filled in with silicone. So what I did was I smeared some RTV silicone in there. I took a piece of cellophane, placed it over the, the liquid silicone, put the cap over it, and tight, twisted it, and tightened the cap overnight. And now when I take this out, it wasn't stuck because the silicon wasn't, or the, the cap wasn't stuck to this, and this peels off because it wasn't stuck to the silicon. And now I have a pretty good surface for that O-ring to contact. The only thing I'll caution you on is make sure that you understand how deep you're going to cut and that no wires are going to be severed. When I use the cutting disc down there, just a centimeter below my finger, there are several wires that actually came from the factory connector here that route to all the bulbs throughout this whole assembly. And so you want to make sure that when you're cutting, you don't sever those wires. If I wasn't careful about it and I cut another, say half a centimeter or a centimeter, I could have cut all the wires, not known it, put this all back together, and then been surprised when the signal lights or the low beams or whatever don't work. So this is the mechanism, the, the approach I used. Oh, one other thing is the connector here um, to the original there's the original connector that was on the halogen bulb, and then there's my new connector that goes to the ballast. I was able to tuck that inside, so that connection is in, in a watertight location. And the only thing outside was this ballast, and I found a convenient 
piece of plastic here, convenient location to mount the ballast, they drilled a hole and zip tied it. So it's, it's really quite a tidy um, installation and safe, it's not gonna get banged around. I picked that location before I removed this whole headlight assembly so that I know that that's not gonna interfere with anything, anything upon reassembly. In closing, this is one, one method to install LED lights in a headlight housing that is not designed to accommodate them. Good luck with your do-it-yourself projects. If you like my videos, please subscribe.